Boston baked beans, it's a New England thing. Yesterday I went shopping and I found these two bean pots. I have smaller versions, but I wanted something a little larger because I used to make beans all of the time. This is, I'm gonna say my mom's recipe, but I was going through some other books. They're very similar, very much the same, but this is what I call an old recipe because if you find newer ones, they're adding wet mustard versus dried ground mustard seed. Some are adding ketchup. We're gonna use the navy bean, a little bit smaller, nice white bean. They are from North America and pretty traditional to use in Boston baked beans. And what I'm going to do first is rinse them, look for any that are broken in half and then I'm going to let them sit overnight. I'm just gonna cover them enough, let them sit overnight, and then tomorrow, which will be Sunday, I will prep them to start making beans, and I will show you that next week, but I just wanted to show you that the two bean pots that I picked up yesterday, I'm gonna use this one. This is the proper size for it, but I love these. This to me says fall, but also summer when you're having uh, hot dogs and beans, so. I'm going to use my mom's recipe. I'm gonna compare it to all of these actually, but this is the one that I always made. Not only am I looking for broken beans, you could find little pebbles in here. I found a couple that had sprouted. You just want to get the dust off. So it is a good thing to rinse the legumes off or the beans off first. Well, considering I got these out of the bottom of the container, not many broken ones at all. Just a couple. Oops. All right, I'm now going to put these in a pot and cover them, just cover the top with water. Okay, these are ready to cover, but I was just looking at the Joy of Cooking book, and they have a lot of fun information in here, such as rules for soaking and cooking dried legumes. One of the things it's talking about is making sure the water is soft. I'm pretty sure this water is soft. I'm just, I'm just joking. I have no idea if our water is hard or soft. Never had it tested. And I've never even considered that in the past, making baked beans. I don't think my mother has either. If you have, and you know the reason, it probably says it here, but um, I didn't finish reading that. But if you know the difference of why you should have soft water versus hard, 
comment below or you know see if we can find out I could look it up I could should do that later all right so this is gonna sit overnight and tomorrow morning I'm going to rinse them twice that's one thing that this book or another book I have I think it's an old book of Salem with other things talks about rinsing them twice I decided to head out to the garden to harvest the rest of the herbs we had the high 30s the other day at night and I want to harvest the rest of these and dry them because the other day I added the orange mint to some sleepy thyme tea and it really just added that little bit of extra that I wanted. So I'm going to harvest a lot of this now. I might leave some of the smaller ones. But, um, and then this box might even come inside during the winter. Same with the strawberry mint. So I'm going to harvest this, cut it right down, and then see what happens for the next month. And then, like I mentioned, bring it in because there's a lot more coming up here. You can see it growing. It smells so good just with touching it. Oh, we got a hummingbird. Things like this makes me glad I'm easily distracted or I would have missed the hummingbird. If you can hear me, I am snipping it just above a little node or a little leaf just to give it a chance for the season. So on this shoot here, I'm going to trim it right down at that little leaf there. I'm bringing in as much as possible to dry for some more tea. The sage and the rosemary did fantastic. And all of a sudden, the basil took off. That's crazy, crazy good. The lemon balm didn't get very tall this year, but I'm going to cut this back and bring some of that in to dry as well because I love lemon balm tea. I didn't do any lemon verbena this year, but I'll try again next year once I fix all of these beds and add a few more raised beds. Welcome to my world. This clock says 419. Mind you, I'm trying to be out the door by 430. This one says 408. This one says 356. The only reliable one I have, oh, and we certainly cannot rely on the tall case clock. The only one I can rely on is uh, my phone. I thought I would share another thrifted coat I got this last year and also my sweater underneath. So warm, wool, and I'm gonna need it tonight. I actually have some coats for my stepdaughter, a hat for my stepdaughter, another vest for myself, gloves, hat, because it's supposed to get into the mid 50s tonight and we're going to an Oktoberfest and it's gonna be so much fun, but I wanna make sure that we're all warm. I did have time to start putting some leaves on the dehydrator and we will go from there. And now I'm doing the strawberry mint. Very tiny now that end of the season, but it's okay. This is our town's annual Oktoberfest and the purpose of it is to raise funds to fix this old gal. This is the meeting house and the money goes towards the renovation that we have to do on it. Sunday morning and I still have not finished the garland but I do have a basket of leaves that I collected the other morning 
and I'm gonna come outside with Willow. I've been coming out with a flashlight because we did have a skunk underneath the grill the other day, so keeping an eye out for that. But look at the sky. I love this time of day. And we're out with the flashlight, just checking everything. This is also how I watch for if I see deer eyes or anything, but always checking first. I love going even to the treetops. This is an awesome light. I don't even, I'll, I'll try to remember to link this. Um, this is something Ben got for us. It's, it's rechargeable, so we don't have to keep changing batteries out. This is what fog looks like when you put a light through it. And let's shine on the moon. Think they see us up there? In the star? Yeah, this is what I do in the mornings when I first wake up. <laughs> Sunday morning, as I mentioned just a moment ago, and time for me to get these beans going. Now, overnight, they soaked up the water that I put in here. I'm going to add more water now, once again, to cover. I'm gonna bring it to a boil, then I'm going to turn it down to a simmer for at least a half an hour, possibly a little bit more. What I'll then do is take a couple of the beans out on a spoon, and you actually blow on them to see if the skin loosens and lifts. If so, they're done enough to then put them in the bean pot with all of the other ingredients. If not, I'll have to boil them a little bit longer. The ingredients, we have a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of molasses, and this is kind of what makes it the Boston Baked Beans. We're not using any vinegar in this, we're not using any ketchup. Um, this is a pure, good old-fashioned Boston Baked Bean recipe. So once again, half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of brown molasses, we have a teaspoon of salt. My mom wrote a tablespoon, or I did when I was a kid, but I'm gonna go with a teaspoon. I can always add more salt. A teaspoon of ground pepper, and we have a whole onion that we are going to slice and put that at the top. So I'm just waiting for the beans to finish, and I will show you the skins as they're peeling of what I was meaning, and then I'll put it together and put the pot in a preheated oven. And tonight, I'm going to enjoy these with a ribeye steak. Ben doesn't like baked beans, but my stepdaughter and I do. So we're going to enjoy those tonight and I'll let you know what I think next week. Okay, I'm going to show you what I meant about the skins lifting. Let me just get a couple of these beans out. I'm gonna pull this up to the camera a bit. I hope I'm gonna move the camera into the light a little, see if I can show you this even better. So you can see here the beans have been cooking. They were actually for more like an hour here and I'm gonna blow on the skins. 
going to be clear enough. I don't know if you can see that the skin's kind of peeled off and lifted. That means they're ready to go. I just brought this out to remind myself and also to remind you that if you're making these for the first time or even if you're following directions and didn't get to the bottom, make sure you save the water that you're boiling your beans in because you're going to reuse that. It has some flavors in it and some nutrients, I'm sure. So you want to save that. So I'm going to put this in the sink and then I'll have my colander on top and I'll pour the beans and then I'll have the water there. So I just wanted to make sure I reminded myself and also share that because you do want to use that. I thought I would show you now putting this together and there are so many different ways to put this together. This is my way and it's a little modified even from my mother's. So some people would put the beans in and then pour the items in, stir. Some would put all of this together first and then pour it in and stir. My mother's recipe has you putting everything in all of the water and pouring it on top. I'm going to do a combination of both. I'm going to use some of the reserved water, put it in here, put all the items in just so it's a little bit more liquefied and put it in the pot. And then I'm going to pour the rest on top. It's supposed to come up to the top of the beans. I'm hoping I have enough, but if not, I'll have to add a little extra water. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I need my spatula. So I'm just going to first use a little bit of water. And if I lose my microphone, I'll probably just zoom in and do a voiceover because the microphone, it's not holding a charge anymore. And I'm going to have to buy another one. But anyways, so like I said, I'm just going to pour some of this right now because I want to make sure I'm not going to be adding too much water. Because once these are baking for four to six hours, if the water goes below the beans, you want to add more. So I'm hoping I have extra. All right, so I'm going to add my molasses. And since this is hot water, it's going to melt nicely. I could have sprayed this first, but no need. No need. Okay, there we go. And I meant spray with Pam or something. And then my brown sugar. And then the one teaspoon of ground pepper, the teaspoon of salt, and as simple as that, you're just going to mix it together. I found another New England recipe that did have the vinegar, but it wasn't as old. And I've had some beans when I'm out and about at some local restaurants and I could never put my finger on what I didn't like about them. And I realized even though I love vinegar, like on French fries and malt vinegar on French fries and stuff, I realized that those must have vinegar in them where I'm used to no vinegar. So those newer cans of beans also have vinegar, but um, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna, and hey, I can always make them again. I got other kinds of beans to make more through the season but I wanted to start with the navy beans. I'm just trying to break up some of the mustard. I should have done that a little bit first, I guess. All right, so now I'm gonna put into the pot, I'll just get rid of these little sleeve things here. But what I'm going to do is add about six to seven slices of bacon, but I have them cut small. And I'm out of, I don't have the salt pork. I might have already mentioned that. And then I'm going to Put the beans in. Now my mother just put the salt pork on the top, but I'm going to mix mine in with some layers. Yeah, this pot size is going to be perfect. And I'm just going to put some more in. And cutting it this way, if you choose to use the bacon, then once it's cooked, you just have nice little tiny morsels of bacon within the beans.
I didn't, I didn't unload my dishwasher yet. Otherwise, I would have put that in. All right, and so I'm going to take first my mixture here and pour it over. I do need more, so I'm going to use the rest of this reserve. The goal was just to at least cover the beans, and I'm hoping I have enough. Once I, I'm going to have enough. So once these are covered, I'm going to save the rest of this water just a little bit and add more during the cooking time. All right. Now I'm just going to add a few more pieces of bacon, and then I'm going to cut the onion and open it up like a flower and lay that on top. These other pieces of bacon, I'll put them on a baking sheet with some tin foil and cook them. And we love bacon here in the house, so that will definitely not go to waste. What I'm trying to do is cut to the top but not completely the bottom so that it kind of blossoms open once I pull it apart. But I'm going to do that when it's in the pot in case it falls apart on me. What am I doing? I'm going to, I could have probably stop. I'm going to do these nice thin strips so it gets nice and tender easily. That looks good. Okay, so what I was saying is I just cut the bit off the bottom so I could have it up top, and I sliced, I sliced, I sliced all the way, but not through to the bottom. So the hopes are, I'm going to put inside the pot here and kind of just open it up. Let it flower like that. There we go. And then I'm just going to put a couple more pieces of bacon around there. Because I like bacon. And the onion will get some of that bacon flavor too. You can do this however you'd like. This is just something I'm doing. All right, so I have my oven preheated. This is going to go in there. And in five to six hours, I'll take it out. You know, it's still very early in the morning, so we're not going to have this until a lupper time, possibly. And we'll have it with some ribeye that I have right now thawing. And we'll do that on the grill and have a delicious dinner tonight. But I'll let you know next week how they came out, and I'll also show you what they look like. Well, Kindred Spirits, it's been a long week for me, but I only got to show you a few snippets of things that I got done. And a lot of them were latter part of the week, including getting these herbs ready for tea, making the baked beans, going to an Oktoberfest, and getting things off to the post office for the online store. Well, this is what's going on right now at Sugarwood. I have a few of us wrapping up orders and getting orders to go out. You guys rock. This was just one of the three shipments we sent out. Amazing. So grateful. Next week, we're going to do a little bit more. I'm going to get some decorating done for Halloween, and we'll go from there. Until then, bye now.